Well of the tape, David Lopez and Joseph Suero. You see David Lopez, just 19 years of age. But Chris Algieri, look at those physical dimensions for a guy that's somewhere between 140 and 147. Six feet tall, a 72-inch reach. That is a lot for Joseph Suero to deal with here tonight. And We're all set for our opening contest. New platform for David Lopez. Also a new nickname, formerly Dynamite. Now dangerous David Lopez. And we'll see how dangerous he could be in the early going with these knockout bonuses hanging in the balance. Round one, this one's scheduled for four in the welterweight division. I mentioned both these men weighed in uh, quite a bit below the welterweight division. And Chris, uh, David Lopez even dangled the idea of fighting at 140. Of course, still very much a growing man. Yeah, you know, he mentioned that at the fighters meeting. I, I... Oh, left hand and down goes Swear. Beautiful hook right hand combination over the top from Lopez. Great Lopez awareness. trying to dig to the body, but he brings that hook up top. And he sent Suero nearly through the ropes. That's going to be it. Man, Suero's tough. Suero somehow back on his feet, yeah. but that is it. David Lopez straight to the bank with the knockout bonus. And we take a look at the tail of the tape for our second contest of the evening. Stephanie Chavez and Devaney Cuevas very evenly matched physically. Stephanie Chavez more of the long-range boxer, but Devaney Cuevas with a two-inch reach advantage. We'll see how this one plays out. See Stephanie Chavez in the black trunks trimmed with white and red, as Rebecca Ruber pointed out. And Devaney Cuevas in the black, gold, and purple. <laughs> Cuevas already trying to keep the punch output high. She told us that pressure and volume would be key for her in this fight. Ooh, good counter right hand there from Chavez. Very good change of direction in and out. Manages the distance great. Good work here from Cuevas on the inside, but she gets caught with a nice left hook from Chavez. Both traded hard left hooks there minute they have to fight for their lives but women don't have to deal with that terrific combination there from Chavez run some numbers up top three punch combination and then a sweeping right hand as Chavez turns the corner you know it's only her third fight but you can see how comfortable she is in there as a pro that's what you like to see from a young fighter she's taking chances she's trying things out here comes Cuevas she's tough she wins the last two exchanges along the ropes, beating Cuevas at her own game. A very impressive performance from the amateur standout, Stephanie Chavez. After going the distance inside the OTX ring, the official scorecard reads as follows. Judge Sell scores about 58 to 56. And Judge Webb and Williams score about 60 to 54. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Still undefeated. Cool girl Steph. Stephanie Chavez. And we take a look at the tale of the day for Giovanni Marquez and Nikki Vitone. Plenty of bad blood between these two, as Rebecca was discussing, Giovanni Marquez obviously lags behind Nicky Vitone in terms of a pro experience, but he's going to enjoy both physical advantages and, uh, of course, the fruits of that amateur experience that Nicky Vitone has been dismissing. Good attempt, though, that overhand shot, because that left hand is down low for Marquez. Got the idea, but not finding the range yet. Beautiful lead up for Cotter. from Gio Marquez sends Vitone to the canvas right at the end of round one. Vitone holding on to the dear life there. Vitone brave as ever, but he is in disarray right now. As Marquez is just unloading. Oh, big uppercut. And that is it. A mercy stoppage from the referee. And Gio Marquez has just cashed a knockout bonus. As we take a look at the 
measurables. David Navarro will enjoy a one inch height advantage and a one inch reach advantage as well. Two young fighters with just one loss on their resume, respectively. D'Angelo Fuentes trying to upset the apple cart here tonight. Round one scheduled for six. David Navarro said he's going to show just how explosive and how technical he can be. He told us he feels that D'Angelo Fuentes has just one gear. That's not something, Chris, that Fuentes really refuted. He said, well, I grew up watching Roberto Duran. I'm going to apply pressure. Let's see if he can handle it. Maybe one gear, but it's a pretty good gear. It's a good gear, <laughs> yeah. Pretty good gear. <laughs> to get that downhill momentum, so to speak, that he wanted. This is more like what he wanted to do, but Navarro flashing the defensive capabilities as well. Turns him around and now has Fuentes with his back to the corner and digging to the body. And as punctu he punctuates that defense with a big right hand upstairs that backs up Fuentes. Fuentes lands a right hand. He does. And another one. Good reply there from Fuentes to end round four. I'm sure D'Angelo Fuentes is wondering, well, what would this fight look like if it went eight? David Navarro, I'm sure, wouldn't mind the extra time to try and break Fuentes down. An exciting performance from both men. David Navarro, maybe just with a few too many dimensions for D'Angelo Fuentes, but Fuentes made him work from bell to bell. Excellent, excellent fight. After going to distance inside the OTX ring, the official scorecard reads as follows. Judge Sell scores about 60 to 54. Judge Webb, 58 to 56, and Judge Williams scores about 60 to 54. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. David Navarro! So David Navarro improves to six and one. It should be an explosive co-feature between Raul Solomon and Tyler Howard as we take a look at the tail of the tape. You see the physical advantages for Raul Solomon. Six feet tall, a 72 inch reach. Tyler Howard is going to have some work to do to get to the inside. You see Howard is very heavy footed, physically strong, but... Oh, a hard shot there from Tyler Howard. And down goes Solomon in the first round. Physically strong. You don't get named Hercules for nothing. Solomon flat-footed in front of Tyler Howard, and he caught a right hand that put him on the canvas. Another one right at the bell from Howard. Still a quick combination from Solomon that's breaking through. As you mentioned, just a lot of contact both ways. Yeah, that was my point why this is such a difficult fight to score. I'm curious to see how the judges are going to have it. Stop! Clean break! Hands up! Final 20 seconds, you see big screens here in the arena in Atlanta. You saw Tyler Howard just taking a peek up. See how much time is left. 10 seconds remain. Oh, big overhand right there from Solomon. But back up Howard. Howard hits some big shots right at the bell. And that, Chris Algieri is being saved by the bell. Yeah, Howard was hurt, still hurt. He just basically stumbled down to his corner onto his stool. After going all eight rounds, we go to the scorecard to determine a winner. Judge Sell scores about 76 to 76, a draw. Overruled by judges Webb and Williams, who turn in identical scores of 76 to 75. In favor of the winner by way of majority decision. Hercules! Tyler! Howard! Take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event. Albert Bell and Presco Carcosha. We've been talking about the physical advantages that Albert Bell has over most fighters in the division. But look at this. Six feet tall. 130 pounds, a catch weight here tonight of 132. Presco Carcosha, five foot six. Although, despite that height disadvantage, just a four inch reach advantage for Albert Bell. 
Hall, very explosive athletically, with strong legs, strong foundation from Karkosha as Bell breaks through with a nice right hand. And now has Karkosha along the ropes, puts a combination together. Not surprisingly, most of the opponents of Albert Bell have the same problem. Karkosha having trouble closing the distance. You see him lunging in and falling short. He's firing very sharp right hands to the head, into the body, just like that. Ooh, left hook to the body there from Karkosha. He tries to crank it upstairs as well. Karkosha very, being very smart, using that counter left hook to the body in the middle of exchanges. For that left hook up top. These explosions are going to be important for Karkosha. Can't allow Bell to just kind of march him around the ring. The way he's looking right now. Hard right hand to the body there from Bell. Just whipping that right hand downstairs. Ooh, good counter right hand. Catches Carcosia. Well, that one rock Carcosia back at Bell. I think feels like he has something here. Sweeping right hand breaks through in an uppercut. Love the punch variety of those right hands. Some are straight, some are looped. Koja just swinging for the fences with that left hook, trying to get Bell off of him here. Well, that was uh, an exhausted looking fighter in the corner of, in uh, Presco Carcosha. You saw Brendan Gibbons and Coach Ting Sugar trying to motivate their man, but. Karkosha's dealing with a lot right now, swelling underneath and around both eyes. And a nightmare of a style matchup in Albert Bell in front of him. Bell coming out being very precise, landed some good sharp jabs that split the guard. Landed a good right hand left hook, and it's countering very effectively. Bell said that not only does he believe he's the most avoided 130 pounder in the world, he believes he's the best 130 pounder in the world. But he's even offered himself up as a short notice opponent in the past. That is a nasty left hook knockdown. Perfectly timed left uppercut hook combination, a bit of a hybrid punch. Karkosha all over the place right now. And if knockouts are what you're looking for from Albert Bell, he might be on the brink of one right now. Karkosha's corner trying to egg him on, but he just got blasted with a right hand to the body. Bell is on full stop and destroy mode right now. Just nowhere for Karkosha to go. Karkosha does not want to be here anymore. If he wants to survive this onslaught. And he may make it out of this round, but I think Karkosha's corner has some consideration to do in terms of pulling him out of this fight. Ooh. One more for good measure at the end there. And that is it. Yeah. Garkosha's corner says that is enough. And Albert Bell picks up the knockout victory here in Atlanta. He cashes the bonus. And maybe, just maybe, he stamps his ticket to a world title shot finally. Ladies and gentlemen, upon the conclusion of round number five, the blue corner informs referee Malik Walid their fighter can no longer continue, obligating him to stop this contest and declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, Prince Albert!